What is going on, people? Ryan Williams, ASC here with another match preview. It's Arsenal taking on Chelsea at the Emirates this weekend. Now, guys, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Share the content as well. Help me get to 150 subs. Let's make that happen. Um, London Derby, Chelsea. Bring it in the signing of probably a dream signing for them. In terms of a dream, more or less a dream for the striker himself, Romelu Lukaku, coming back to Chelsea after being sold all those years ago. Um, you know, he's gone on, left Chelsea to make a name for himself. You know, he had a loan at West Brom. He went to Everton, went to Manchester United, went to Inter Milan, and now he's back at Chelsea. And Arsenal, not exactly getting on to the best start. Of course, we did lose to Brentford. The less said about that, the better. And we've literally just spent over £129 million in the transfer window with the signings of Ben White, Nuno Tavares, Sammy Lokonga, Aaron Ramsdale, which is soon to be announced, more than, more than likely, and Martin Odegaard, which was announced today. Now, I'm sure I'm forgetting Ben. Did I mention Ben White? I didn't mention Ben White. Ben White too. So, to this game, I'm not going to lie. I have zero confidence in this game. Zero. I think Chelsea will run us ragged if i'm honest if i'm gonna go by what i saw on friday last week opening day of the season brentford yes we'll be at home at the emirates but it doesn't matter we played chelsea pre-season they still got the better hand on us and we didn't look great in that game either and with the team you know should I even say started to shape up? I mean, our starting players, we've only bought two. And there's question marks over both of them. I mean, with Odegaard, is he even going to play? There was even reports coming out yesterday where there might be a situation where he can't play because of his visa. So that's, that's going to be fun. Um, yes, he's been double jabbed. So it was quite easy for him to come over yesterday get all the paperwork done take the pictures and this is why they announced him um this morning but in terms of playing that might be a situation here so i don't really know if he's actually going to feature ben white didn't really cover himself in the best of tracks in the brentford game for honest didn't look great at all um yeah i mean it, it, you have to question it 50 million pounds then again it's one game I mean, look at the defence. He had Pablo Murray next to him, who's like a snail. You've got Callum Chambers, who, you know, I know I've been kind of defended a little bit um, through the back end of last season. But, yeah, he's he, he pretty much just got exposed and just, just had an awful game. An awful, awful game. So, a centre-back basically can play a right-back, but not an actual right-back. And then you've got Tierney on the other side, who seems to be the only defender that we can actually count on so it's always going to be tough it's always going to be tough especially with Bert Leno in goal as well who is just falling off a bloody cliff now I have my reasons on Bert Leno why I don't think he's good enough I've expressed my feelings on Bert Leno numerous times on why I think we should have upgraded or why I felt we should have kept Emmy and sold with him but that conversation is for another day. I can't be asked to get back into it. This is the Chelsea preview, of course. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. They've got guys like Kai Havertz, who's really started to come into his own. You know, ZH is out. So, more than likely, there might be um, Werner, who we all know Werner ain't exactly a goal-scoring machine, has he? But he does make these runs sometimes that makes you wonder. Will he actually do something? That's a question as well. Um, they got Callum hudson Adoy as an option too. Um, you know, Kante is going to be back for this game, I, I, I was told. You know, they got Jorginho. 
you know, Mr. Penalty. Um, I can say Mr. Penalty, not Mr. Penalty. Um, yeah, man, I mean, Chelsea's team is really starting to grow in strength. You know, and look at the transfer window they've had. Yeah, they might have just bring in Lukaku for 90 odd million, rising to 100 mil. But, I mean, the amount of profit they've made, that's how you do the, That's how you do your business, Arsenal. That is how you do your business. There's so many players that need to be sold. But we could just go back into We could just talk about that in a different video, of course. We'll talk about that near towards the end of the window, depending on what happens. But... Chelsea, very, very strong team. You know, um, a lot of people were tossing their hat in the ring thinking it might be this season they go after the league title. After a successful back end of the season, after Tuchel came in, took them off Lampard, won the Champions League, then won the Super Cup just a few weeks ago. I mean, it's just getting better and better for Chelsea, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So, boy... And yet there's Arsenal who, you know, we, <laughs> oh jeez, it's painful to even say. So you might as well smile instead of getting angry. It's, yeah, it's the way we deal with things over here in North London, on this side anyways. But, um, yeah, let's just get into the lineup. In goal, I mean, Bert Leno, he's got to do better at his near post. He has got to do so much better at his near post. It's a joke. The times I've seen this guy getting beaten at his near post, not even just a Brentford game, or even at Stephen at Throwan. I mean, what was he doing? I know there was footage of him kind of being held, but push the defender off you. You know, he needs to man up. I've been saying this about Leno. He's not a leader. He's not loud enough. He's just, he's just there. He's just there. It's not enough for me with Leno. Sorry. But yeah, he's going to have to be in goal. We've got no alternative. Right back. I'm putting Cedric back in the mix. Because for me, as Chambers is a natural centre-back, I can't get have him ripped up again. I think his confidence is probably in pieces. Pieces. After his performance against Brentford, where arguably... It was his fault for their first goal. He could have dealt with that a lot differently on both occasions, clearing the ball out and actually challenging um, the goal scorer. But it is what it is. So I'm going with Cedric. He needs to prove himself if he still wants to be here as he's expressed that in the last few weeks as he was getting interest from Feder Uh Centre-back pairing is going to have to be Ben White, I'm, I'm either reluctant to even say Rob Holden, you know. The only reason why is because Holden makes mistakes and Holden does things that just make me struggle. But Pablo Mari is just too slow. We saw the way Mari got pretty much done by Brentford. And, you know... Um, yeah, and that preseason game against Chelsea as well. I mean, granted, he was left for dead by the rest of the defenders on that counter. But yeah, I'm I'm so reluctant. I'm I'm just gonna have to say Rob Holden. The reason why I say that, I mean, yeah, I think I'm just gonna have to go with Rob Holden. You know, uh, left back it's Kieran Tierney all day long. No issues with Tierney, hundred percent. I know I'm going four at the back and it might be dangerous because Ben White looks more suited for it at the back. But I, I, I'm just not too sure, guys. I'm really not too sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Should we go three at the back or should we stick to a four? You let me you let me know, guys. In the double pivots, I mean, Partey out because of our previous fixture against Chelsea in the preseason. Mine series, of course, that tackle by um, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Took Partey out. He's probably going to be back in the next few weeks. Hopefully, be back in time for Norwich. Of course, that means he misses the City game also. Um, so, it's going to have to be Xhaka and Lokonga. For me, Lokonga... I like Lokonga already. I know, it's a, I know it's quite early. But I see a lot of dynamism with him. I see him not really shying away from the ball when pressed. 
he makes sure he gets it back and he pushes forward. None of this El Nene sideways business, which frustrates the hell out of me, you know? And Xhaka, listen, 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 listen. Xhaka will probably just do Xhaka things, but Xhaka needs to actually help Lokonga. He's supposed to be this leader and one of the captains, which that's another conversation we could talk about, guys, really, on another video. But he needs to help Lokonga here. If he's supposed to be a natural born leader and he's supposed to be his partner, helping him settle into the country, helping him set, you know what I'm saying? Finding his way in the Premier League. Because it's a tough league for Lokongo. He's only 21 years old. Do you know what I mean? And so far, his attributes that we've seen are very good, especially his passing as well. That direct passing that he can, that he can do, I'm in love with it already. We'll need to see more. But, you know, it is what it is. So Xhaka, as, his leader, as the leader, geez, I can't believe I'm saying that, as the captain, sorry, realistically, needs to be helping him out a lot more. Simple as that. Now the front three. Now this is where <laughs> I sound like a broken record. I say it every season. It gets interesting because Pepe didn't really look great at Brentford. If we're going to be honest, I've said this about Pepe numerous times. He's so hot and cold. It's unreal. We see in the back end of last season, he was fantastic. His goal record and um, his um, goal involvement, sorry, as a whole, we're actually very, very good last season, to be fair. Um, just felt Mikel Arteta should have gave him more chances. Of course, we can go back to the Leeds game, but a lot of things have happened since then, you know? And even the season before, when we won the FA Cup, I thought Pepe had a really good back end to the season. But he needs to be consistent. Yes, I said Cedric, so Cedric can help him out in that right, you know, on the right side, you know what I'm saying? So, Pepe needs to really try something different. I'm sick and tired of seeing skills in the corner and trying to beat your man with the same move. And let's face it, two shells going to probably play, play a, um, a five at the back system with a win back in the centre back. And they're probably going to try a double pressing. We saw that in Brentford. Pepe looked very, very vulnerable. So, hopefully something in training has happened where Pepe can actually get some help from the from the um the right back in Cedric or whoever plays right back now in Mikel Arteta or you know try something new try something new you know then we got Bakayo Saka who has only just come back you know he's he's you remember he had a very he had a he had a very good Euros you know unfortunately it didn't end the way we would have liked it unfortunately and you know he's had to become he had to sorry He's had to overcome a lot of adversary and, you know, he's kept his head up high and, you know, I love this kid, man. Trust me, he's got, he's just got a lot of fight, got good spirit in him and I think he's just getting better and better slowly, you know what I'm saying? So, for me, he has to start. Then you've got Martinelli. I mean, Martinelli is another option. I mean, he didn't exactly set the world alight at the Brentford game. I think he was... To be honest, I think it was quite awful for Monis. Just felt he was running around. Didn't really have much instructions or what to do. I just felt he tried to get involved in the game as much as he could, but it just wasn't good enough in the end. Bearing in mind, this guy has just come back from the Olympics in Tokyo, where he did win the gold. Well done to Martinelli. But yeah, what do we do with that? You know, and there's Balogun as well as an option. I'm not even going to mention William because for me. He's, he's done out here, man. He's finished. There's no point mentioning Willian. Um, yeah, what do we do? You know? What do we do? And I actually forgot. I'm going to put ESR number 10 because I don't think Martin Odegaard is going to be ready, if I'm honest. I mean, they're talking about visa issues. I think we're going to have to play ESR for the time until Odegaard... You know, all that visa stuff is sorted out. So, I will say that. I apologise, I forgot. But, for me, within that, the wings, it's going to have to be... I'm going to put Pepe on the left. Because I think you can get a little bit more out on the left. I think everyone's pretty much figured him out. He likes to cut in, cut in, 
onto his left when he's on the right. And I'm going to put Saka on the right. Because I think with Saka, he looks more comfortable on the right as well. Saka, you can play him anywhere. I just think it's best if we put those two on the opposite sides. And we saw a lot more from Pepe on the left. I remember a game, I think it was Southampton away last season. On the left, he looked brilliant. So why not keep him there? That's down to Mikel Arteta. So they're three is Saka, ESR on the 10, and Pepe on the left. Now, the striking issue. Now, this is where we have to have a Bamiang. And look, there's no disrespect to Balogun. I just feel he's not quite there yet. He's not ready yet. I think it was a massive risk just dashing him in. We have Martinelli also as an option, but I feel... Boy, it's tough. It's so tough. Should Aubameyang come back in? I know he was ill, reportedly, and it's come out saying he didn't contract COVID, which was good, but will he be fit enough to start? I'm hoping for it, and I'm going for it. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. We need him. We need him, guys. You know, like I said, no disrespect to Balogun and Martinelli. I think Martinelli is a little bit rusted, and he hasn't really been tested a lot down that middle. And the key word is a lot. We've seen it. Maybe once or twice or a few times, but not enough. Um, like I said, with Balogun, I feel he's not ready yet. Not, not, not yet. But it is what it is. But guys, what do you think of that lineup? Let me know in the comment section below. What would your system be? Who's your starting eleven? And what's your predicted scoreline? This scoreline, I. I can't see anything other than a loss. I'm not even going to lie to you. I don't like doing this, but I don't like lying in how I feel. I feel Chelsea will probably come out winners of this game. And, uh, boy, the scoreline, it, it, could, it could really be bad for us. It really could be bad for us. The way we defend... The midfield itself, I mean, like I said, the Congo still learning. Xhaka, just his immobility, just, oh, God. Um, the right back, I don't even know who he's going to pick. Um, the centre-back pairing, you know, like I said, we've got people missing. Gabriel, Thomas Partey, and we still need, I still think we need a central midfielder in there. But it is what it is for me. I hate to say this. I'm going to go 3-1 Chelsea. I hate to say this. I believe we'll get a goal. I feel the Emirates, you know, will cheer the team on. And we will get a goal. But ultimately, Chelsea are just too strong for us. I hate to do that, guys. But i just got to be honest. i really got to be honest. 3-1 to the Blues. Oh, God, I hate saying that. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree or disagree with what I think? Let me know below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Road to 150 subs. Let's make it happen, people. So, guys, enjoy your afternoon. And if anything else pops up, I will make a video about it. Stay tuned for more content on the channel. Have a good afternoon. Peace.